The iPhone 11 Pro Max is definitely one of the most anticipated phone launches of the year. Apple has launched three different versions of the phone this time. The 11, the 11 Pro, and the 11 Pro Max. So I figured I'd durability test the most expensive of the three. Apple's done some pretty interesting stuff with this new version. There's a lot to check out and take in. Let's get started. So iPhones have been able to fast charge for a few years now. But even though the iPhones could charge fast, Apple only included a slow 5 watt charger in the box, which I don't think was very fair. This year though, that's changed with the pros. Apple has included an 18 watt fast charger in the box, which is a plus one for Apple for not making their customers go out and buy extra accessories to utilize their phone at full potential. It's definitely a step in the right direction. This 11 Pro Max is the midnight green version, and has the same frosty finish that we saw in the Pixel 3 and the OnePlus 7. It helps keep fingerprints to a minimum. Let's jump into the scratch test. Apple claims that this year they have the toughest glass ever in a smartphone, which, you know, sounds like a very Apple thing to say. Even if this is the toughest glass of all time, it's still made of, you know, glass. Glass is glass, and glass breaks. If anyone ever comes up with something stronger than glass, they'll definitely be calling it something different. Until then, we see scratches at level 6, with deeper grooves at level 7. The screen still definitely won't be scratched up by keys, coins, or razor blades, but it'll also still crack if you drop it. We'll talk more about that in a second. Up here at the top notch, we have a metal speaker grill. Pretty solid. Won't be falling out on its own. Another fairly substantial improvement this year is with the selfie camera. Of course, numbers aren't everything, but with 4K and slow motion on the front camera, Apple is actually competing with other flagships. I personally won't be posting any flowing hair slow fees on Instagram anytime soon, but still, it's definitely a step in the right direction. There is the same plastic edge around the glass screen, which is a good impact layer between the two extremely hard materials, glass and stainless steel. The vast majority of smartphones these days are made from aluminum. It's lighter, cheaper, and more malleable than most of the metals, so it's fairly easy and inexpensive to form into a phone. The sound you hear, though, is stainless steel. Steel is a much stronger metal than aluminum. So strong, in fact, it's difficult for my razor blade to get a bite on the metal. Steel is a 5.5 on most scale of hardness, which is about the same level as my razor blade. Aluminum would be a three, or a three and a half, which makes it much easier to scratch than stainless steel. Apple has taken their perceived premium branding and actually used a premium material to match. The phone is still plenty expensive, of course, but the price tag is a little more justified by the materials being used. It's a step in the right direction. There's still no expandable memory card slot, which is good since it leaves me with something to complain about. But there's also something extremely good about this port that not many people have caught. This phone is IP68 water resistant. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what's cool about that? Most flagships these days are 6.8 water resistant. And yeah, you're right. But instead of doing the same basic 1.5 or 2 meters deep for 30 minutes submersion that every phone manufacturer does to get that IP rating, Apple went above and beyond and doubled the depth to 4 meters for 30 minutes. I'll explain more during the teardown. But the takeaway is, the iPhone 11 Pro is by far the most water-resistant phone on the market right now. That's a huge step in the right direction. Apple has actually innovated. And I think that deserves a thumbs up. Yeah, Apple still has the dumb proprietary screws and no headphone jack. But with jacks being lost from every phone faster than Thanos can snap his fingers, it's hard to keep calling it a negative when everyone is doing it. Let's talk about the back glass for a bit. Remember, my razor blade is about 5.5 on most scale of hardness. The glass is a 6, so my razor blade isn't doing any damage to the surface of the glass. The glass is actually damaging my razor blade. Like sandpaper on wood. But it's only the rough parts of the glass that's causing the abrasions. The smooth Apple logo does nothing. But let's say you happen to have the copper cooling vapor chamber from a Galaxy Note 10 in your pocket. It looks like that hurts. 
What if your phone rubbed up against a piece of plastic? Would that hurt the glass? Visually, it looks like the answer is yes, but actually the answer is no. The etched surface of the level 6 glass is microscopically rough and is literally taking tiny chunks off of these softer materials as they brush up against the surface of the glass. But this material transfer dust can easily be brushed off, leaving the phone looking just like new. There might be a tiny bit of residue left over still, but it's good to know that these marks aren't permanent. Coins leave pretty hefty marks on the glass. Quarters leave a residue. Even Abraham Lincoln, you know from back when presidents were respected, leaves his mark on the glass. The cloudy surface of the glass is slowly wearing away at all my coins, and the dust is being left behind on the surface. This random screw leaves a mark. And of course, keys, which are also usually made of soft metals. They leave some pretty major residue behind. To solidify the point a little further, we can take my Mohs scale of hardness picks, and we can very clearly see that every level of pick leaves material behind on the glass, until we get to levels 6 and 7, whose tips are hard enough to faintly wear down the surface of the glass instead. Science. We'll see if all these marks come off or not in a minute. Let's chat about this camera unit. Apple has carved this camera hump out of the back glass slab itself, which is very unique. It has a subtle raised lip, about half as thick as a penny. My worry with the raised glass surface is that it adds four extra edges around the square for chips or cracks to occur. The good news is the circular cameras inside the square stick up further than the glass itself, so it offers a little protection for the back glass panel and raises it off of whatever surface it's resting on. Like we've seen on several Android phones, the iPhone 11 Pro Max now has the perfect trifecta of cameras. A 12 megapixel 2x telephoto camera at the bottom, a 12 megapixel wide angle camera in the middle, and a normal 12 megapixel camera up top. Since my razor blade is doing no damage, we can tell it's protected by a scratch resistant material. Up until now, Apple has always claimed this material is sapphire. This year though, they didn't. There's no mention of sapphire anywhere on the iPhone spec list. It looks as though Apple is using the same hybrid material that they've always used for the camera lenses, still seeing the weird fracture scratch things at levels 6, 7, and 8. Apple's hybrid camera lens material is just as good and probably better than glass, and there should be a category for it, but at least now there's no misleading vernacular on the website. I think that's a step in the right direction. If the back glass of the iPhone does crack, the cracks won't affect the camera lenses or the cameras themselves, since each of them has their own little individual metal housing. The cracks will work their way through the glass panel, but not affect the lenses. Smart move on Apple's part. So if that lip ever does chip, the camera units will be unaffected. If you're still worried about scratches or getting residue caught up inside the textured iPhone surface, you can always add a skin, like this limited edition robot skin. Or if you're like me and always rock a case, dbrand has got you covered with the grip case. It's got some super clicky buttons, and the skin on the case is interchangeable. I'll leave a link down in the video description. And huge thanks to dbrand for sponsoring this video. I know a lot of you, when deciding what phone to buy, ask yourself, yeah, but can it withstand fire? And don't you worry, I have that covered. The iPhone 11 Pro Max has a 6.5 inch, 1242 by 2688 resolution screen. And that Super Retina XDR OLED withstood the heat from my lighter for a full 60 seconds without leaving a mark. Remember, the invisible oleophobic coating evaporates, and that covering is kind of important, so don't try this at home. But at least now we know that, you know, fire is hot. So you might have noticed that over the course of this video, the heavy marks I made on the back panel with different metals have already started to rub off. When my hand brushes up against the phone, the dust falls away leaving the phone glass, looking almost as good as new. It really is rather impressive. I've never had an iPhone fail my durability test before, and I might not always see eye to eye with the iPhone lineup, but Apple does make very structural and solid smartphones. And this iPhone 11 Pro Max is no different. There's zero flex. These premium materials are combined to make an extremely solid build. Apple has used recyclable stainless steel on this phone, and is currently using 100% recycled aluminum to build the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, the Apple Watch, and the new 7th generation iPad, which is something to be super proud of. There has been a shift over at Apple. Yeah, Androids can still do more, but Apple has taken so many steps in the right direction with this new iPhone 11 Pro that I'm running low on things to complain about, and that's definitely a good thing for everyone. There's a lot more to talk about and review this from the inside, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the teardown. It's free, and come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.